Did I, do you want, you said you want to fight me? Look at, I don't want to fight. That's not what I'm after with this whole keto thing. That's the attitude that so many people have towards the ketogenic diet or when we talk about the ketogenic diet. They think that we're just zealots and that we just want to just throw the ketogenic science all over the place and disregard everything else. Look at the ketogenic diet is great, but we have to look at what else is happening inside the body. Maybe it's just one piece of the equation. So no, I don't want to fight with you. I just want to lay out the science because it's really cool science. So let's dive in to how the ketogenic diet's affecting the gut microbiome, which in turn is having all these positive effects and might actually be what's really going on. Hey, please do hit the red subscribe button down there in the bottom right corner. Good mix of scientific information and good, fun, practical lifestyle nutrition information. And hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications so you never miss a beat. After this video, there's a link down below to check out Juve, which is a red light therapy company. If you think keto's weird, then get ready for some really interesting science because red light therapy is photobiomodulation where you're working really in a biohacking sense with your mitochondria in terms of how it receives light. So anyhow, Highly recommend you check out Red Light Therapy. Check Juve out down below in the description after you nerd out with this content. All right, let's rock and roll. So many researchers right out the gate do not like the ketogenic diet as far as the gut microbiome is concerned. They state that it triggers a uh, limitation of diversity, less diversity in the gut, and they assume that that's a bad thing. And I can understand why, and I'll get to that in one second. But I have to counter that with a couple of studies that have shown that yes, when you first start a ketogenic diet, you have a limit in gut bacteria diversity. Makes sense because you're not feeding yourself a bunch of starches, which normally would feed bacteria. Okay, no brainer. But what a lot of researchers miss out on is that after 12 weeks of doing a ketogenic diet, those numbers start to come back up. And after six months, sometimes even less, you have a stabilized gut bacteria that's back to normal despite being on a ketogenic diet. It just takes time for the bacteria to evolve and possibly learn how to eat fat instead of starches too, who knows? The other thing that we have to look at is it's really hard to say, first off, if a bacteria is good or if it's bad. We are not God. We cannot play God here and say that we know if a bacteria is good or bad. We don't know a tenth, a one hundredth of what each of these bacteria do within our body. So we can't just willy-nilly label them good or bad. And the reason I say that is because there are plenty of good bacteria in our gut that get acted upon by immunosuppression and things like that and turn bad, okay? Just like a person can start out good and turn evil, or an evil person can correct themselves and become good. Our bacteria are living species and they will do that inside of our gut. So researchers typically want to say that we want a diverse bacteria because in some ways it's a little bit of a cop-out. It's a lot safer to say, just have a little bit of everything than it is to make a statement that says you need lots of this and you need less of this. It's a safe statement and I understand it. I say it myself too. Diversity is good. It gives you a checks and balances within a wide spectrum of things. But what does this have to do with keto, okay? Cool new study that comes out in Journal Cell talking about how the ketogenic diet affects the gut microbiome, which therefore affects epileptic patients. But this has an effect for you as a normal person that's not epileptic as well, okay? First thing we've realized before is that when someone that is epileptic, that is on a ketogenic diet to prevent seizures, goes on antibiotics, they lose some of the anti-seizure effects of the ketogenic diet. That should be kind of a dead giveaway that a lot of it's rooted in the gut microbiome. Put them on antibiotics, the gut biome shifts, seizures occur. Okay, but we don't really know why because seizures are complicated and the gut microbiome's just as complicated. But the study in the journal Cell took a look at what are called germ-free mice, okay, mice that do not have any gut bacteria, okay, and it gave them uh, a ketogenic diet, put them on a ketogenic diet with no gut bacteria whatsoever. It did not have an effect on preventing seizures, okay? So if there's no gut bacteria and they ate a ketogenic diet, it didn't stop seizures. Okay, well, where do we go from here? We know that keto is generally associated with two kinds of bacteria. These bacteria are mucinophila and parabacteroides, okay? So mucinophila and parabacteroides, two primary bacteria that are elevated in the ketogenic diet, not the only ones that are elevated. Okay, those guys come back to the equation in just a second. When these germ-free mice were given a combination of these two bacteria, okay, mucinophila and parabacteroides, plus went on a ketogenic diet, it did prevent seizures. Okay, so no bacteria plus keto equals yes, seizures. Okay, these two bacteria plus keto equals no seizures. 
Well, the reason that this occurred, if I can get a little bit biochemically on you for a second, is there is a decrease in what is called gamma glutamyl aminos. Now, these act as sort of a precursor to the production of glutamate within the body or in the brain. Okay, so we do know from other studies that on a ketogenic diet, you are tilted more towards what is called the GABA scale. You have more of the calming neurotransmitter GABA effect within your brain. In fact, in non-epileptic patients, we see huge increases in working memory, huge increases in reaction time, a lot of things that we as keto people understand already. We know that, yes, we have big improvements in cognitive function. So it turns out that this result as far as lessened gamma glutamyl aminos plays not only a role in epileptic patients, but it plays a role in why we feel so good mentally. And this all is linking back to keto and the gut biome. But now let's look at how species interact. And this is where things get really trippy, okay? So researchers next took the whole ketogenic microbiome, okay? Not just these two bacteria species, but the whole keto gut biome from a mouse that's been eating a ketogenic diet. They transplanted this bacteria, this whole biome, into a normal mouse, a mouse that was not eating keto. Okay, guess what? The whole biome coming into this normal mouse ended up preventing seizures, despite not being on a ketogenic diet. It prevented seizures for about a month, and then after a month, the seizures started to come back. Why would that happen? Because a month of normal eating, even with a keto gut biome, is going to start to transition that keto gut biome back to a normal gut biome. So they were losing, slowly, the effects of the keto gut biome, thereby losing that, again, gamma glutamyl amino reduction. So therefore, the brain lit up, right? Then they took those two specific bacteria, the mucinophila and the parabacteroides. Okay. Individually, when they would put one of those bacteria into mice, it would have no effect. So if they just put mucinophila in, no change in seizures. They still had seizures. If they just put parabacteroides in, they still had seizures. But if researchers put both of them in at the same time, there was a reduction in seizures. So somehow, these bacteria are working together. And we're not gonna begin to try to figure out what they're doing metabolically, enzymatically, whatever. The point is, is that the ketogenic diet is doing something in our gut biome that is having an effect with our brain. So yes, in some ways, this video is because I get frustrated with people that say that we're just keto zealots that are talking about burning fat for fuel, because it's that simple. But a lot of it is just, I'm excited by the research and I'd like to share it with you. So if you want to be locked in to continued research, make sure you hit that red subscribe button and don't forget to tune in daily. See you tomorrow.